You called that giant chopper an hombre nuevo. Si. It means new man. New man? There was nobody piloting that thing. It must be controlled by machine. Yeah, it seems that way. No human being could pull off those crazy maneuvers. But it's not crazy. It's smart. It sings, too. When we first saw it, one of your men said, Pilot must be an hombre nuevo. Me? I do not like the name. Why? Hombre nuevo was what El Che was striving to become. What all of us who joined the Sandinistas strive to become. That's why. An hombre nuevo is one who finds joy in virtue and voluntary labor. It makes me furious to see that name given to such a monster. I'll bet. Chico called that helicopter El Calibri. Our name for the hummingbird. You saw how that chopper moved, how it hovered in midair like a hummingbird? Uh, a hell of a lot bigger than a bird, though. True, but better than Hombre Nuevo, don't you think? When you get kidnapped by El Colibri, it's all over. They take you to a prison camp and torture you until you snitch on your compas. That's what took Chico. They have no mercy. Once you talk, they toss you out like trash. I knew this, and still I could not save Chico. If he cannot be saved, I will do what must be done. Don't write him off like that. Sometimes you have to survive, even if it means sacrificing your honor. I'll get him back. I promise. Snake, I need your opinion. How strong are the enemy's mercenaries? They're well trained. They've got more than enough men. Seasoned, too. A lot of them probably saw action in Vietnam. They're a tough bunch. And armed to the teeth. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a mercenary force field that many tanks and attack choppers. It shows how much cash they have to throw around. And connections. How did they get access to such weapons? How do you think? They're backed by the one and only CIA. And here we are. Half of us farmers and the other half students. Children even. And weapons. We're so short on guns we have to steal them from the enemy. As much as I hate to say it, we're always going to be on the defensive. I know. And mi viejo. Without him, we... Yeah, I know. I don't know if we can win. Can we, Snake? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. But... Amanda! What? Listen to me. Don't ever let your men hear you talk like that. I... You're their leader, and a leader has to stand tall, even when times get tough, when it feels like the fear and uncertainty could crush you. You're the one your comrades look to for reassurance. That's what a leader is. Don't forget it. Snake. If you're looking for comfort, go find a church. That's all I've got to say. You are right. I am sorry. I need to pull myself together. You'll be fine. I know you have it in you. Thank you, Snake. The land in our country belongs to us, and yet it does not belong to us. How so? Along the coast, it is all banana groves, and in the mountains, it is coffee. I guess in that way, it is not so different from here. Plantations. Almost all the bananas and coffee are sold as exports. The landlords keep the money for themselves, leaving precious little to the farmers. Worse, the biggest landowners in the country are Somoza and his family. But it does bring in foreign currency. I doubt even that, at least for bananas. The plantations are owned by American corporations. The bananas are processed in factories on the plantations and exported to America from private ports. It's like having little American enclaves along the coast of Nicaragua. But the farmers have no choice but to go work there. Es ridículo. The people have to take their land back. It is one of the things we are fighting for. Tell me, when exactly did you realize your dad was working with the KGB? About six months ago. Up until then, we only had beans to eat. And then suddenly, we started to get eggs and flour. Our bullet shortage simply disappeared. How'd he get the cocaine? Ask the KGB. All we did here was process it. Coca plants grow here, too. But to my knowledge, almost all of the stuff we used came from Colombia and Bolivia. It's processed in a factory and then shipped to ports on the Caribbean Sea. Where does it go after that? I never thought about it. 
I mean, I did not want to think about it. Uh, the biggest cocaine consumer in the world is the United States. I'm guessing they smuggle it in on vessels disguised as fishing boats. Wait. La CIA uses that route too. Are you telling me they're selling cocaine to their own country? Uh, looks that way. Those bastards are turning their own children into junkies? Are they insane? No. Just afraid. Afraid of a communist Central America. La Cia calls their new toy Peace Walker, eh? Yeah. So? It is an insult to us Nikos. Because of the guy you were talking about. Walker? See, si. Although it happened over a hundred years ago. Back then, the political parties in Nicaragua were at each other's throats. The Nicaraguan Democratic Party hired an American mercenary to help counter their enemies, the Conservative Party. And that was Walker. After taking care of the Conservatives, Walker decided to seize power in Nicaragua for himself, eventually making himself president. <laughs> the Democratic Party gave him an inch, and he took the whole country. But it did not end there. Not only did he make English an official language, he tried to reintroduce slavery. Walker's goal was to build a Caribbean empire centered on the American South. Caribbean empire? Huh. Sounds kind of like what Coldman is trying to pull off. The gringos are always like that. They invent some convenient excuse to trample all over foreign countries like they own the place. Peace, Walker. Ha. What happened to Walker in the end? A United Central American Army, led by Costa Rica, kicked his ass and sent him running back to America. Then why don't we do the same? I, for one, don't intend to let Coldman get his way. Good idea. I'm glad we have you, boss. Amanda, when did you join up with the Sandinistas? About a year ago, when I went into the mountains with mi viejo and his group. I thought your dad was with the FSLN from the start. No. He fought alongside General Sandino, but after that, he retired for a while. He found a job, got a wife and a house, and raised us kids. Then one day, some Sandinista students came by. And he felt the old fire in his belly. Something like that. All he did was help them escape from La Guardia, though. But then La Guardia showed up. They broke into our house and began pushing him around, shouting questions. I'm guessing he kept his mouth shut. No matter how hard they hit him. Our house was trashed. After that, he was on their list. They harassed him day and night. It was only then that he gave himself over to the Sandinistas. He kept it hidden from us at first, so we would not get hurt. Mm. He sounds like a good father. He was. But my mother got fed up with it. She left us. I don't blame her. Why didn't you go with her? It was a hard decision for sure. But like my father, I could not let Samosa get away with his crimes. But most of all... Chico. He is too much like his papa. One way or the other, he was going to stay. And I could not leave him behind. Soon enough, La Guardia drove us out, and we found ourselves in the mountains. It just kind of happened. Well, for an accidental revolutionary, you sure put up a hell of a fight. The mountains make men into warriors. The training is harsh, but it brings us that much closer to being hombres nuevos. Chico couldn't ask for a better sister. I can see why they picked you to be Commandante. When I was little, I came down with malaria. Unlucky for me, it was the bad kind. I was in a daze the whole time. And at one point, they said I was not going to make it. Mm. Malarial encephalopathy. I hear it's pretty common in tropical malaria cases. Even today, my memory sometimes gets a little fuzzy. Since then, I've had this fear of mosquitoes. When I hear them buzzing nearby, I get jumpy. Ah, that explains the chain smoking. See, I thought it might help keep the mosquitoes away, just a little. Maybe it is all in my head. You're the same way, right? Well, uh, I will say this. I prefer a cigar over mosquitoes. <laughs> Me too. I've got to hand it to you. It takes guts to conquer your fear like that and live a gorilla's life in the wild. It is nothing. 
El Che did not let asthma stop him from leading the revolution. Compared to him, I am no hero. I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Thank you for saying that. Mi viejo was the leader of the Frente. He was the last of the generation that knew General Sandino. He saw the general's exploits firsthand as a boy. He would tell us stories about it all the time and about how the general was assassinated. Did you know he was getting money from the KGB? I had some idea, but I did not have the courage to confront him about it. I know it was a painful decision for him to make. Uh, I can imagine. Yes, my father was a good man. I loved him as a daughter, and his soldiers believed in him. Thanks to him, La Frente held together even in the worst of times. I don't know if I can ever fill his shoes. Chico's 12, right? <laughs> right. Isn't he a little short for his age? Malnourishment. Food is hard to come by when you're running around in the jungle. <laughs> He's got quite an appetite. I know. I didn't want him to come in the first place, but there was no one to take him in. I had no choice but to look after him. Don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes it's better for a kid to be with his family than far away in a safe place. Hmm. Thank you. Promise me this, though. When your fight is over, make sure he gets a proper education. Give him a chance to be something other than a gorilla. It's not too late to teach him something other than fighting. Okay. I promise. You know what book Chico really likes? The World Encyclopedia of Mysterious Creatures. The Loch Ness Monster, the Yeti... UMAs. Yeah, I know. He's still so much like a boy. I worry about him. He'll be fine. I know plenty of grown men who still go crazy over UMAs. Are... are you serious? You have taken such good care of me since you saved me from El Colibri. I want to return the favor. Just wait until you're healed up. Then we'll talk. I appreciate that, but you need all the help you can get. It might take a while for me to heal completely, but I'll be fine once I'm on my feet. Put me in a combat unit. I'll pull my weight. I wouldn't expect any less from a Sandinista Commandante. <sighs> Enough flattery. But seriously, it does not feel right for me to be sitting here while my compas are out risking their lives. One thing's for sure. Having you out in the field would be a big boost to Sandinista morale. Of course, our ultimate goal is still the overthrow of Somoza. But until we get ourselves back in order, we will follow your lead, wherever it takes us. Glad to have you on board. Amanda, you getting used to Mother Base? Yes, it is heaven compared to living in the mountains. We are no longer constantly on the run from La Guardia or mercenaries. Some of the new guys we recruited used to be mercenaries. We are getting along. It was difficult at first, but once you talk to them, you realize we've got plenty in common. I see. Good to hear. We may be enemies, but we are all still human beings. La Cia soldiers, La Guardia... The same goes for the people of America. What's gotten into you? Mi viejo got involved with drugs in order to scrape together money for La Revolución. He did whatever the KGB said, all for Nicaragua, or so he told himself. But I realize now, in the end, all he did was help poison young people of America. Yeah. I have made up my mind. Even when I leave Mother Base and return to La Revolución, I will never turn to drugs. Nor will I look to the KGB for help. If we topple Somoza using the KGB and drug money, we will lose the people's hearts. So, you're choosing a different path from your father. I still respect him, but I will not do things the way he did. Well, I'm sure Chico will be glad to hear that. Chico is a grown soldier now. I could not face him otherwise. Well said, Amanda. Those are the words of a true Commandante. Stop. I was inspired by the greatest comandante I have ever known. Boss. Uh. <laughs>